Now let's try to describe the potential electric potential generated due to an, an isolated atom. If this blue line shown here is uh, representing the electric potential which is uh, Q by 4 pi epsilon 0 R which was taught in elementary electrostatics. So if we have a charge Q then the electric potential at R units away from the, the, the charge Q will be Q by 4 pi epsilon 0 R. So if it is plotted in both directions actually this horizontal axis is uh, something like radius vector r we have plotted on either side so if you take the potential this way it is going to be like this it's a 1 by r function as you know r tends to 0 gives uh, infinity so this is going to touch the infinity when x becomes 0 when this position becomes 0 so same thing is applicable on the other side as we move away from the atom or as we move away from the charge lattice uh, positive lattice positive charge on the lattice the potential experienced by the electron is going to decrease so if we take a single isolated electron it is going to have this type of potential seen now if we extend this to a cluster of atoms let us say uh, we have a series of atoms in one dimension so if we have four atoms as depicted in the picture first atom is going to have its own potential like this second atom like this third atom like this and fourth atom like this so on you can extend it in uh, both x and positive and positive x and negative x directions you are going to have this kind of uh, uh, potential seen by an electron clearly one can convince that these curves are going to form an average value or something like a peak when they are intersecting they are going to cause a uh, a little elevation and they are going to they are going to form uh, some kind of peaks and how the peaks will be is uh, depicted in the next picture which is uh, this one so these curves gets uh, somewhat smoothened uh, and as a result we see that at every atom we are going to have some kind of uh, a deep uh, trap because this is the point where uh, the electron will find minimum potential energy so obviously it tries to settle over there but if it has more energy definitely it will come out of this and once again move to the another one and so on so this is the potential depicted by um, the average uh, number of electro uh, average number of atoms means if you take uh, some infinitely many atoms every electron which is moving inside this periodic potential is going to see this kind of bumps so it's something like uh, you can imagine as a speed breaker uh, I mean in speed breakers uh, there may be some three or four humps so wherever uh, the vehicle has to cross this the vehicle gets subjected to some kind of disturbance so similar thing uh, is going to be experienced by the electron it's just an analogy please uh, don't take it too literal as it is not possible to solve the curved potentials Kronig and Penny they came up with a model actually these are curved barriers uh, as it is not uh, that easy to solve the Schrodinger wave equation with this kind of potential so they chose some kind of rectangular barriers so these rectangular barriers are acting like traps for the electrons which is uh, which are flying over uh, this region and uh, what is going to happen if electron is subjected to this kind of periodic potential is what we are going to see in a moment initially in the quantum free electron theory suggested by uh, Arnold Sommerfeld there they considered only the barriers at the edges of the metal uh, if you imagine this box as a metal only on the right edge and left edge they have got the barriers and inside everywhere it was free so electrons can move anywhere but that was not applicable to all kinds of solids it may be true in the case of metals so if you want to extend it to metals the only way is to introduce these barriers so the introduction of these barriers uh, simply makes uh, uh, makes us to support the existence of insulators and semiconductors also normally the theory for metals is strictly applicable for metals there is no light on the insulators and semiconductors whereas in this chronic penny model one can have the idea of semiconductor and insulator too if you try to solve the problem of uh, an electron inside a periodic potential the schrodinger wave equation for this particle that is the electron the Schrodinger wave equation for the electron inside a periodic potential will have solutions of the form 
which are given by some psi of x see the wave function can be some psi of x and what Bloch said is that psi of x can take only this kind of form that is u of x into e power plus or minus i k x if you can remember this e power plus or minus i k x represents a plane wave either along positive x direction or negative x direction depending on the sign of this plus or minus so this plane wave is multiplied by some function in electronics terminology they call it as modulation so if this is the carrier wave it is being modulated by this function so basically it is a multiplication so, so schrodinger wave equation uh, for periodic potential problem will have solutions of the form psi of x equal to this with a condition that u of x cannot be any desired function it is only that particular function for which u of x is equal to u of x plus a is satisfied so block theorem sta states that the solution for electron wave function will be psi of x is equal to u of x into e power plus or minus i k x subject to u of x equal to u of x plus a what is this a well a is the period of the lattice period means the gap between neighboring positive ions so on the lattice there will be separation between the atoms so that separation is a so u of x can be any periodic function with a period a which is the same as that of the lattice so if this condition is satisfied then you can have the solution for the wave function the immediate corollary from this block theorem is if you take this psi of x is equal to some u k of x k is some subscript plus or minus uh, into e power plus or minus i k x and uh, u k of x must be a periodic function so u k of x plus a equal to u k of x then you can try with uh, psi of x plus a here here it is x plus a so if you substitute x a as x with x plus a so it is going to be u k of x plus a and e power plus or minus i k x plus a and if you expand this it is going to be u k of x as you know u k of x plus a is u k of x according to this block theorem so if you substitute this here it is going to be e power plus or minus i k x we are just expanding this e power plus or minus i k x into e power plus or minus i k a so this is the product term this and this once again if you take a closer look this curly brace term is actually the same psi of x because u k of x into e power plus or minus i k x is nothing but psi of x so you can safely write this as e power uh, psi of x uh, so psi of x plus a will be psi of x times exponential of plus or minus i k a so this is another form of the block theorem now let's try to analyze the situation using the chronic penny model so chronic penny model is basically the application of block theorem to the particle inside a periodic potential so these curves are actually the original potential as it is not possible to solve the schrodinger wave equation with these curves they have replaced them with the rectangular variables so we can clearly determine the region let us say from x equal to 0 to x equal to a or x equal to b etc you can predict this as it is a one dimensional problem and you can divide this entire periodic potential into several regions so it is mathematically easy to solve that's why they have replaced this with this so these are basically rectangular barriers these rectangular barriers they have assumed the height as v0 so this term v0 is actually the height of the rectangular barrier and also they have chosen different regions i'll show you the regions so the same picture i have shown here so this rectangular barriers you can see here uh, they have got uh, x equal to 0 at this location this is the x equal to 0 it's an arbitrary point so the region 1 depicted by this is actually extending from x equal to 0 to x equal to a this is the first region and there is a second region which is on the left of this which is actually a barrier whose height is v0 and width is b actually of course in coordinate convention it is minus b because it is on the left side of this origin whereas on the right hand side we take all positives so width of this barrier is b height of the barrier is v0 this is the second region and coming to 4 of course 4 is uh, actually uh, ending at a plus b because if you take this as a this is going to be a plus b uh, 
of course uh, region 2 and 4 exactly are exactly identical there is no difference apart from the indexing we chose this as minus b and this is going to be just a plus b apart from the x coordinate position there is no difference uh, in the in the width as well as the height of the barrier so region 2 and 4 are identical similarly region 1 and 3 are also identical and of course the region 5 is also identical and similarly if you take this 6 6 4 and 2 are identical you can extend this to any number so this is the periodic potential chosen by Kronig and Penny and they have tried to solve this let's proceed so as we have already depicted that the height of the barrier is V0 uh, uh, let's make a zoom of uh, only three regions of course there are regions on this side and that side but our interest is only to focus on the region 1 2 and 3 so as we want to obtain the solution for uh, Schrodinger wave equation first we have to apply the Schrodinger wave equation for particle with mass m inside the region 1 so while solving this we must keep one thing in mind while solving the problem both Kronig and Penny they chose uh, these barriers as uh, rectangular direct delta functions direct delta function what is this direct delta function just let me explain what is this direct delta function you can see here this direct delta function is something like a rectangular barrier of course uh, in reality it is not a rectangular barrier but one can imagine it as a rectangular barrier so in this case the barriers height is v and width is b so you can look at this uh, uh, brownish red color box it is the it is the box rectangular box with area v into b if you choose v into b as a constant it means the area of this box is remaining constant whatever be the dimension then if you increase the v or in other words if you try to compress the barrier from both sides along x direction if this is the horizontal direction x if you compress the barrier from both sides obviously the height of the barrier is going to increase so if you look at this uh, shaded blue color it is actually depicting the reduction in b and increase in v so in the limiting case as you reduce the barriers width or you make this b tending to zero if you make it extremely thin the area remains constant and the height blows and in the limiting case when b tends to zero this v tends to infinity keeping v into b always a constant means the area is constant but as you reduce one dimension the other dimension blows up this is what you call as a direct delta function and Kronig and Penny they have assumed this kind of direct delta functions as barriers here which will come in a moment after solving this so for the time being you assume that these uh, regions 3 2 are having height v0 I am not saying it's infinity there are some constants v0 right now as we have already depicted this is origin this is a and this is obviously a plus b because the width of the barrier is b and same thing is applicable in region 3 where it is a negative side of the origin so it is chosen as minus b now as we mentioned v naught b is always a constant the product remains constant if you try to solve the schrodinger wave equation in region 1 it is going to be something like this as you know e psi equal to h psi is the schrodinger wave equation of course uh, there was a psi missing over there let me copy it here so this is uh, uh, the wave function uh, this is the uh, schrodinger wave equation in region 1 here v is the potential energy of the electron if the electron stays inside this barrier it is not going to have any potential because in between the barriers the potential energy of the electron is zero so we can safely replace v with uh, zero because if it is in this region its potential energy must be zero then v equal to zero i'm sorry it's uh, not shown here it's actually zero i don't know why i don't know it's not showing something is wrong but actually it is zero please uh, v, v equal to zero now in this region uh, if you substitute zero here and rearranging this equation just you take uh, 2m this side and uh, h cross to the other side and bring it to one side so it is going to be just dou square psi by dou x square and similarly here the same psi is missing once again so this is equivalent to zero um, and if you call this 2me by h cross square as some constant earlier we called it as k square 
as uh, we have some other variables involved here as k because uh, you have this uh, block theorem having k so i'll rename this as alpha square some constant so 2 me by h cross square is now alpha square and the solution for this schrodinger wave equation as it is a second order harmonic equation it is going to have solution um, in the form of sine or cos or equally e power i here i chose e power i so a e power i alpha x because it's alpha square psi do square psi by do x square plus alpha square psi equal to zero means the solution is a sine alpha x plus b cos alpha x that is one way or a e power i alpha x plus b e power minus i alpha x is the other solution the speciality of this solution is it is oscillatory in nature oscillatory means this term will never go to infinity it will always bound between a positive and negative value that's why it is called oscillatory solution for whatever value of x it may be similarly if we try to solve the schrodinger wave equation in region 2 as we know in region 2 the potential v will be just v naught and the limits are a to a plus b so let's try to solve the schrodinger wave equation here so in this schrodinger wave equation we have once again the same form of course once again the psi is missing so here also so in place of v we will replace it with v naught and apart from that remaining things are same once again we have tried to rearrange this so we pull this v naught to the left hand side and minus h cross square by 2m dou square by dou x square also to the left hand side and we have make it we have made it zero so finally we got dou square psi by dou x square minus 2m v naught minus e by h cross square psi equal to zero you can see minus minus becomes plus so it is 2m e by h cross square psi minus 2m v naught there is a reason for writing like this why we made uh, this negative is see the electron will experience the potential only when its total energy is less than v naught so we want to make v naught minus e as the term which decides so if electrons energy is less than v naught then only it experiences the potential and if v naught is greater than e i mean v naught is less than e or the electron has more energy in that case it is not at all going to care for this potential it is something like a, a simple analogy let's assume that there is a bird which is flying in the mountains if the bird is flying at an altitude which is much higher than the the peaks definitely it is not going to care for the peaks it is going to just fly like anything but if the bird is flying at a lower altitude definitely it has to take care of the peaks as it is going to hit the peaks so similarly here if you imagine that that capital e the energy of uh, this electron as the height of the bird at which it is flying and v naught is the potential which is actually analogous to the height of the peak so if this is the height of the peak and this is the height at which the the bird is flying then definitely v naught minus e case only is going to make us some sense otherwise if the bird is flying at higher altitude it doesn't care for the peaks right so we are interested in this case where v naught is greater than e or the electron has lesser energy compared to the barrier so we have made it like this now if you take uh, this v naught minus e uh, as greater than zero and uh, you call this this particular term as beta square as we have called alpha square in the earlier case now we are calling it as beta square so this term will be do square psi by do x square minus beta square psi equal to zero so once again there will be a solution but remember that earlier it was a plus now it is a minus so plus will give you oscillatory solutions like sin x cos x etc whereas this minus n gives sin hx cos hx etc so these are the hyperbolic solutions or equally in exponents you can write this as e power beta x and e power minus beta x so there is a difference between the earlier solution and this one of course the constant c and d they, they doesn't make any difference they are just some constants some arbitrary constants which are not known to us whereas this term we, when you compare with the first region solution they are actually different that one is an oscillatory solution so if you increase the x to any value it is going to oscillate whereas here if you increase the x value in positive sense this term is going to blow up it is going to 
blue to infinity whereas if you do the same thing to this it is going to die out because e power minus infinity is just zero so this is an exponentially dying term and this is an exponentially blowing term or growing term right so this is the second region now coming to the third region uh, we can solve the equation but it is going to add two more constants and the problem becomes uh, tedious because unless you give the values of a b c d you cannot solve the problem so you must have minimum number of constants hence we use the block theorem here as we know that uh, the regions uh, uh, 4 and 2 in this picture they are one and the same so as we have solved in 2 we can apply the same thing to the 4 using block theorem so what we do is uh, if you try to apply the block theorem to regions 1 and 3 so region 3 the side 3 of x this is the solution to schrodinger wave equation in region 3 is nothing but the solution obtained in this region which is the the first one times e power plus or minus i k a plus b you can see here it's actually it's not psi 2 i should write it as a psi 1 sorry it's a psi 1 only the first region and third region are interrelated like this so this is going to be psi 1 of x e power plus or minus i k a plus b as you know if you choose this as origin the origin for this uh, third region will be here so the gap between the two is just a plus b that's why if you recall the block theorem it says that uh, uh, the previous region psi of x into e power i k the difference between the two regions that was the block theorem you can recall here a is the gap or period here in this case it is e power i k a just like that e power i k it is a plus b in this case so the previous regions wave function now let's proceed further so if you move further uh, anyway we are not going to solve it why because uh, uh, the solution requires a uh, solving of uh, a huge determinant 4 by 4 determinant in order to get this answer anyway in our syllabus we have only qualitative analysis but not quantitative analysis so if you take this we have three regions and we have got uh, four unknown constants a b c and d we have four you can see here a is one unknown b is another unknown and similarly c and d are the remaining unknowns so these unknowns can be solved by using the boundary conditions as we know there are characteristics for wave function so wave function must be single valued it must be continuous up to first order derivatives and it must be normalizable these conditions we have studied in the in the fundamentals of quantum mechanics so here if you match the boundary conditions match means if you take the psi of x at this boundary of region 2 and region 1 it is going to give us some relation between a b c d that is one equation similarly if you try to solve the same thing for its derivative so take the wave function here take the wave function here take both derivative and match it once again the same boundary x equal to 0 so if you do all these things you are going to end up with uh, so many number of equations and those complicated equations if you solve for a 4 by 4 determinant you are going to end up with this expression in the exam also you can just by heart this equation you don't have to solve it just you remember this equation this equation is actually beta square minus alpha square by 2 alpha beta times sine alpha a sine h beta b plus cos alpha a cos h beta b equal to cos k a plus b this is obtained after solving the determinant of a 4 by 4 matrix right and we are not interested in solving it well this equation though it is uh, the final end product of the earlier exercise it doesn't make any real sense so what Kronig and Penny did is they have brought this uh, uh, direct delta function potential idea here so far we haven't used the direct delta function potential just we solved it as uh, some constant v naught and some constant v some constant b now we'll make the approximations as this is a transcendental equation uh, you can solve it with the help of a graph so we'll come back to the graph in a moment so what they did is uh, they actually try to apply this uh, b tends to 0 v naught tends to infinity logic here as we have mentioned earlier in, in this uh, video earlier so you can go back and uh, refer to this why v naught times b remains constant and why v naught tends to infinity as b tends to 0 so if you apply this here v naught infinity doesn't mean really infinity it is something very large so if you calculate this beta square minus alpha square of this previous term you can recall this 
we have this term so this term if you calculate it is a beta square is nothing but 2 m v naught minus e by h cross square this is the beta square and similarly alpha square is this so subtract them you get this term and clearly one thing if e the energy of the electron is much much smaller as we know that v naught is blowing to infinity means it's very high so v naught minus 2 e is something like infinity minus 2 e still it is going to be infinity means it's a larger quantity so you can approximate this as v naught is much much greater than 2 e uh, this entire term becomes 2 m v naught by h cross square this is one constant and we keep in mind that v naught times b v naught b is a constant always and uh, if you substitute it here once again we are going to have the term c beta square minus alpha square by 2 this alpha beta we are pulling aside what we are doing is we are pulling this alpha as the sine alpha a by alpha and we are multiplying by another another a here because it's just sine alpha a by alpha so we want to make it look like sine alpha a by alpha a so we are multiplying in the numerator with a and dividing with a so it is a sine alpha a by alpha a multiplied by a that is first term similarly this for, for this uh, sin h b beta we are going to do the same thing the leftover beta we are pulling here and we are multiplying by b both in numerator and denominator so this term looks like sin h b beta by b beta and in the numerator we have an additional b so here we have multiplied a here we have multiplied b so it is the product a b sin alpha a by alpha a sin h b beta by b beta these manipulations are only made to make this expression much more simpler now we know that b tends to zero so as b tends to zero we want to see how the term is going to behave so sin alpha a by alpha a is one term and sin h b beta by b beta is another term here we have the b dependence there is no b dependence in the first term so if you take this and apply this you know sin h b beta e power b beta minus e power minus b beta by 2 which is sin hx formula and clearly you can convince that the numerator and denominator both tends to 0 in this case so it is 0 by 0 form there you can apply the l hospitals rule which is nothing but the derivative of this divided by the derivative of this so for that we will take the limit so the derivative of sin hb beta is nothing but cos hb beta of course the derivative is with respect to b as limit is happening on b so sin hb beta's derivative with respect to b is nothing but cos hb beta with inner derivative beta so that is beta cos hb beta and anyway the derivative of this with respect to b is just beta so beta beta gone cos hb beta with b tending to zero we know cos hx with x tending to 0 is 1 because e power x plus e power minus x by 2 so it is uh, 1 plus 1 by 2 which is uh, 2 by 2 which is 1 so this is the term 1 now we got rid of the term and finally we got just this as a uh, 1 so only for that reason we have manipulated this alpha and beta this went that way so finally this term drops to 1 therefore this term is nothing but uh, p sin alpha a by alpha a we are calling this entire product term as this plus cos alpha a is equal to cos k a how we got this you can easily check this is beta square minus alpha square by 2 as we have solved this as the 2 m v naught by h cross square so 2 m v naught by h cross square into a b the term is simply the p and uh, the sin alpha a by alpha a we are retaining the term anyway this is 1 so what we are left with is the first term is entirely just a p sin alpha a by alpha a and remaining term cos alpha a plus cos h b beta as you have already seen that cos h b beta limit b tending to 0 becomes 1 here so this is 1 and this is cos alpha a and this term is 1 once again so the p which is mv naught a b by h cross square into sin alpha a by alpha a plus cos alpha a is equal to on the right hand side we have cos k a plus b so this b is gone b tends to 0 so it is just cos k a so from one big transcendental equation we have end up with another transcendental equation so this is uh, once again complicated but it is less complicated compared to the earlier one because it has only alpha a dependence right so to solve this equation what we can do is uh, we can plot a graph and before that i want to mention one more thing this p is the term which is known as the scattering power of the barrier 
and there is one more term which is v not b v not b no a v not b this v not b term is also known as the strength of the barrier what is the strength of the barrier what does it physically mean generally the atomic number of course z varies from atom to atom from material to material and that part is reflected through this v not into b term it means if you choose a particular atom where uh, the number of electrons are something and if you choose another atom in the neighbor definitely the v not the number of electrons will be different so the potential is going to be different that's why with the atomic number we have different properties for materials some material becomes conductor some material semiconductor some material in, uh, insulator so all these terms are actually depicted by this simple term v not b so if v not b is stronger the electrons inside that uh, given material are strongly influenced and on, in other words uh, electrons are more trapped so if the electrons are more trapped you call it as an insulator because electrons are not moving freely in that case you can say it's a it's an insulator and if v not b is very weak in that case p will become very small and that depicts the case of a free electron which is something similar to metal and similarly if you have this v not b neither very large nor very small i mean nor uh, zero maybe some finite value in that case you may you may experience uh, some kind of semiconductor so that is clearly shown by this product v not b and this entire p is called the scattering power of the barrier